Today I'm talking to you about flipped classroom, engage and enlighten today's students. So um, the flipped classroom itself, I'm not going to spend a lot of time at all on defining what flipped classroom is. I think um, there, are, there are some very specific definitions out there of what it is, um, but it's really morphed into just a change into your classroom making it more interactive. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Buffy Riley. I'm from the nursing department. And I started doing interactive things in my classroom um, about a year ago. Actually, it's beyond a year ago. I started off using things like Twitter and Facebook just to reach out to the students, just to kind of make the classroom a little bit different, um, hopefully to keep them engaged. And that's really why I, st I started um, doing this. Let's see if this thing works. Does this work? Sorry. All right. OK. So um, a little bit about me and a little bit, why, a little bit about why I wanted to start flipping the classroom. And it started with. You know, I, I'm, just, I'm a new professor here. I've been here about four full years. But somewhere in the middle, I started looking out, and I'm talking. And by the time half hour went by, nobody looks even interested. I'm asking questions to the classroom, and nobody's barely anyone's answering. So I start laughing, like, OK. You know, and I have to kind of like be animated myself. And I said, well, that's not working. What else can I do to get them involved? Right? So then I started using the Twitter because I thought, all right, you guys have questions out there? Tweet them to me, and we'll flip over and look at the tweets. Well, guess what? Nobody tweeted to me at all. So I, <laughs> I didn't know if it's because they didn't understand what tweeting was or what. And it's interesting, as I get into a little bit about using iPads and things, some of the challenges I faced with students and knowing the technology, because I automatically s assumed that the students were more technologically savvy than I was. I really did assume that. Um, then the other thing that came across to me as I was teaching them and I had them in clinical, I noticed I had some really awesome, strong students. They were great in the clinical unit department. They, were, they really knew what they were doing as far as caring for the patient. Then I had these bright, but they weren't doing so good on their exams, maybe even failing their exams. They're able to apply the concepts in reality, but they came to their tests and they were failing them. And then we had some really bright students that can pass these exams without a problem. Clinically, eh. So I said, there's got to be some kind of gaps there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how is it that, you know, you have brilliant clinical students here, they're doing so well clinically, but they can't apply it on an exam, but they can in front of me, with me, they can talk to me, they can discuss it. And then you, you know, they get to their exams and, and they fail. So to me, I was thinking, hmm, I'm still teaching in a way that was taught to me. A little changes have happened. We use PowerPoint versus, I mean, here's a great example of the old projectors that they used to use. <laughs> now, I, I believe that. I had some coworkers before I came here that were still using the projectors in nursing. Um, so a lot of that is still kind of the same, where we're giving lecture, we're giving some case studies to the students to work on after lecture, but they're still not doing well on the exams, but they understand the concepts when they can apply it safely in front of me. So that's where it really started to peak for me, something, I, I want to start changing my lectures. I want to start looking at different techniques so that I can hopefully provide the students with a better learning experience. Maybe they'll be able to apply it better on an exam. You know, um, so I already talked about my technology interests. Like I started with Twitter. I made up my own um, professional CCM, Professor Riley, uh, Facebook page, Twitter. You know, um, that's another thing you have to consider about using social network. If you are going to use it, just make sure it's either very separate from your own personal or that your personal is extremely professional, which is really what I do. I keep everything as professional as possible. Um, and then, so I started to go to CTE a lot to really try to learn more about, you know, lecture delivery. And, and I was still very new to the community college setting. 
So I felt that I needed to learn a lot about how to reach these students. Definitely, I come from a private school. I came from Holy Name Hospital School of Nursing. So I was taught in, in a private community, called, like a private little diploma school. Um, I went to St. Peter's College to get my, so I stayed with these. So when I came to the community college, I was kind of, it was a culture shock for me. I had to learn about the culture and everything. I had to learn about a lot about what's the best way to um, educate these students. So I spent a lot of time in CTE. And in CTE, they had a lot of things like Flip Classroom and Twitter, and they have a lot of things on you know, how to use Word effectively and how do you do great PowerPoint presentations and things like that. So I learned so much from there that Shelly came up to me, I was in there like all the time, and Shelly came up to me and said, would you be interested in doing this flipped, you know, not using iPads in the classroom? Just iPads, it was an iPad grant. So when I started this, it was exclusively with iPads. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't even sure myself, what, what, what am I gonna do with this? Now I, I consider myself technology savvy enough to be able to manage some of these things, but not technology sa savvy so much that I have this great comfort with doing this. I mean, I have my own iPad, but you know, um, Twitter was about it. So she asked me to do this mini grant. So I said, okay, and I think when I first started this, it was more about using iPads. And I think that was one of my, one of my mistakes, because I, I wasn't putting together the concept of improving learning and using the iPads. I mean, I did see that, but when I initially started this, it, it was all about iPads at first, because I was so caught up in the use of iPads. Um, I've learned now, uh, after doing it for a year, that the iPads are a great tool, and that's what they really just are. They're a tool, just like your PowerPoints are a tool, just like anything else that you use. So, but that's really where I started learning more about Flip Classroom, what it is, and then how I can take that then and apply it to my nursing students, right? And, and with my hopes to then improve their learning. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna go flip back and forth a couple of times because I wanna show you some things. But so my methodology in, in this was, okay, I um, decided, let me look at the college's philosophy. I wanted to make sure that it, it went along with the college philosophy. And um, when, you're, when I applied for the grant, let me just flip over to show you this. You know, you have to fill out a reason why you're gonna do this. So when you're, if you're gonna be adding in technology into the classroom and you wanna do different things in your classroom to make it more interactive, to get the students more aware one of the things I highly recommend is that you look at the college's philosophy and the department's philosophy. And you can't really see what this says here. Let's see if I can make it a little clearer. I don't know if I can. But what I took out of this, I wrote the use of iPads in the classroom is congruent with the mission statement of the college through offering a method of instruction that delivers a dynamic and high quality learning environment that supports the quest for lifelong learning and professional development. So I took that statement right out of, right off of CCM, right off of their, our philosophy here. And I thought that really does support the fact that interactive, it does support interactive learning. iPads alone, no, but you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the iPads, how, maybe how you might be able to use them in your class, but iPads alone are not, um, the only tool that you have to work on this. Celeste, good morning. All right. Um, forgive me for flipping back and forth, but what's important is I want you to, you know, there's, a, I have this book here, and I was gonna give handouts to everybody, but then I thought, I have so much material that I decided not to do handouts, that I decided if anybody wants any of my application and anything that I did, and please email me, okay? And then I will be happy to send you what I did. Okay, so now I had these iPads. So my question was, well, how, 
how many am I going to have? So I had, we have 55 iPads, I think. I think CTE lost a couple yeah. in there, or 20. I don't remember how many I had. They, they were from CTE, the iPads, right? Yes. So why, did you, why did they buy them? She had a major grant. Shelly was involved in a, a major, a big grant. And so sh I, she's going for her doctorate in uh, instructional design. So then she got people like me involved in her study, and she called it the mini study. So I was part of that mini study, all right? So I think actually now I think it was 25 because we had 50 in that class when we first started this. So a thing I want to tell you about is class sizes. So what we have in nursing, two separate class sizes. So we have students, class sizes of 50 and class sizes of 90, depending on the semester and depending on which course we're in. There's four nursing courses. I'm in nursing two, so in the fall I'm in the evening, and then in the spring I'm in the day. The day is 90 students. So in the evening, I only had to think about all right, this is my first time doing this. How many iPads do I have? And how many students do I, you know, how many students will I have? So this way, with the iPads, I then grouped my students based on the amount of iPads I had and the amount of work, all right? Um, and then from there, I built my activities. So how did I build my activities? So this is where my big book comes, and I, want, I have two books. And if you want to look at my books, by all means, please do. But I'm going to show you some things in the books that are important. So while you're developing your activities, what did I do? Did I turn out? No. I want document camera. OK. While I developed my activities, I went and I looked at, now I know how many groups I had. I, I needed to put groups together. Once I knew how many groups I had, I took a look at our study guide, at our objectives. What is my objectives for the class that I'm teaching? What do I want them to get out of this? So that's a really important piece. So anytime you're doing anything um, that's related to anything in the classroom, you want to make sure that you can take that and pin it back to a course objective, to that class or that course. Interesting in nursing, we have four teams, and in that team, we team teach. So we all, like, there's all different learning styles. There's all different things. But we all really stick to this study guide, okay? It's not showing up too good? Oh yeah, here it is. Isn't that focusing well? Uh, is it better? I can't really... A little better? Maybe. There's a little shine on it? Yeah. All right. I apologize. Just kind of wanted... Yeah, I do. I have them in protectors. I think maybe if you took it off in a protector, it wouldn't have that glow. Yeah. I have a lot of things I want to. Okay, I should have probably now put them in protectors. Okay, so that's our. This is what our the, our study guide looks like. <coughs> and on our study guide has our objectives and has all the points that we want the students to be ready for, you know, in their studying. We want them to know all these things that are in the study guide. We may not even have, and this is another struggle, we may not even have the time to teach everything in that class for the study guide. So we always tell the students it's your responsibility to um, know everything that's in the study guide. So that was another piece of my pie, too, of putting together a good interactive classroom. And I have to say, I did it four times, and the fourth one is probably this is the best one. So I'm going to tell you off the bat, when you start trying it, if you start trying different techniques, it's going to take time for you to get used to it and learn some of the things that didn't work versus do work. All right. So um, I looked at that. So it's very important for you to use your study guides, Use your objectives, know your department's philosophy, because it's all important. It all has to tie together, all right? Um, another thing I used, this one's sideways. This was something that we used in the lab, and we wanted the patients to, and the students, I call my students patients all the time. <laughs> They're my patients. Um, to understand what this is. Now, this happens to be about a PIC line or central line, central venous catheter, 
not all of you are, you know, in the healthcare field, not all of you will understand that, but it's a different type of IV. And the problem with it is that students often struggled greatly at what it was. And we spent, I can't tell you how much time in the lab. We even get them checked off as far as that they can work with one, a central catheter versus a regular little IV. Um, but then they come to my, my lab, my exam that has this material in it, and they already forgot it because lab was a few weeks ago, like maybe even a month ago. So then I br bring that back in. I brought that back in to say, don't forget, this piece you have learned before. This is here for you as part. So I added this as part of the activity. You know, so um, these are just some of the tools that I used when I was putting together the first activity. So we have, I don't know, how, we have 16 units total that we teach in one course, in our course, in Nursing 2. Um, and this is one of the 16 units out of, and I teach seven classes, and this is, so I did this with two out of seven classes. So this one was called the protein calorie malnutrition class, and then I had a musculoskeletal class. So, um, so when I first initially started that, you know, I wanted to make sure that all of this was included in, that the students were then going to start understanding how th the difference between these IV lines, these different IV lines, right, which is a very important thing in nursing. All right. Yeah, I also looked at the research, what's out there and what's available. So that's also, I'm not going to really go into that article. That's another excellent point that um, you should definitely, if you plan on doing different things, different techniques in your classroom, look up, look at the um, research that's been done in your field. And I'll tell you, it may not be a lot, or you might be seeing a lot in high school. So you want to read everything that you can. So you want to read what they do in high school. A lot of the sciences, it started in science and math, this flipped classroom in high school. So a lot of the sciences have been using this for a long time, for a while now. Um, but it may be difficult to find it in your field. You might not find that many articles. And then you might want to think about possibly putting together your own research study, which is something that you know, I'm planning on, on continuing. Um, then. This is my activity as a whole, and I'm going to show it to you as it broken up. I know you'll see a little shiny. The first year I took it, and I just used this whole thing. This is a case study. This is a case map um, of my patient, of a patient that includes all the concepts, and I wanted to pull all the concepts together. So I used this when I was developing my activity. This is the points I want the students to know. For the following year, and I spent a lot of time, if you decide that you want to do different things in the classroom, and I do mean you should start slowly, but if you want to start doing things different in the classroom, it's really good to go and make appointments with Shelly, because that's her specialty, instructional design. And she, her ideas are phenomenal. So, I'm like running over. Okay, so what we did now, she told me, don't show them the whole case map right out in front, talk to them, discuss them, and let them know how each point uh, blends together. So for me, the class that I was teaching is about malnutrition. But malnutrition occurs for many different things. People with cancer, people who are anorexic, people who are, you know, for all these different things. We have, you know, they learned about COPD prior to this lecture. But do they, can they put together that a patient with COPD can be very malnourished and have this disorder, this problem? Okay, so um, I made a patient scenario and Shelly said you should do it slowly and this way as you're discussing it, you're bringing it out so they can understand how the pieces blend together and then I had them work separately on the pieces. So I did it like this, so I discussed it. An 86 year old patient, female patient, Five foot five, 86 pounds, weight loss 20 pounds in the last four months after a total hip replacement. And that she lives alone. So that kind of gives you, this is our patient, right? It's not just somebody who decided not to eat, right? And then these were my four main concepts that I wanted the, page, the students to understand. So we had assessments and treatments, um, nursing process, and um, the complications of the treatment. 
because the class really spent a lot more time on the treatment, since the treatment was the main thing that we needed them to learn. There's a lot of safeties involved in that. And then I showed them entirely how each piece of the pie here, you can't really see it great, but how each piece all blends together. You know, it's all a part of what's going on with the, stu with the patient. So then I had the students all individually work on one of these parts. And that's why I thought it was so important for them to understand how everything related. So when the students were working on individual parts, they were able to put it together. And then I used additional tools, and I'm going to talk to you about those, including Blackboard. And Blackboard is a phenomenal tool if you're not already using it. And then from there, I developed my activities. So here is one example. That's not a good one because you can't really see it. This was my 100 student. So if anybody wants to see this book, so you could see the difference between having, you know, uh, having an activity for 90 students versus 50 students on the same class, on the same material. So it, it required a little bit more thought process. And also, I had improved in general, because by this time, it was my third time doing it. But anyway, I would put here what group they are in, 1A and 5. So then they would have to find the highlighted area, and they would have to only work on what's highlighted. All right? And then there was a lot of other directions in there. I had the, pa the case study here, and then it included a lot of other things. And, and these other things include, I'm going to go back to that, included, I had YouTube videos that I had for them to watch. I had them um, create teaching plans. I had them um, do a lot of different things. I had them use their books. They had to answer everything that was in that part of the activity. And then they had to take that activity and put it in Blackboard. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, for that musculoskeletal course. This happens to still be that uh, malnutrition class. This, what the students are doing is occurring during your lecture time? Yes. Or during precept? This is during lecture. And S all, that, all that information you just said that they had, was that given to them beforehand? What was given beforehand is um, my, no, actually I didn't say it yet, oh, okay. is, was my lecture. So that was part of that was part of it. I gave them the lecture pre-recorded ahead of time so that they were able to listen to that in full and come prepared. Now, when I talk about some of the cons, I'm going to tell you that, you know, um, they didn't want to watch a video beforehand, you know, um, or it impacted the rest of my team members and my team because it's, they were saying, well, Professor Riley is taping at home, why can't you? I mean, and it was like, that was a problem, you know, that we were faced. So now, when we think about preparing them ahead of time, maybe it would be reading the book, certain areas of the book. You know, we want to give them some prep. They need to do some prep before they come to class. So, I mean, I started with talking about how I develop my activities. Um, but when they get to class, they need to be prepared. So that when they come to this, they know. Some of the comments, so I'm going to show you the, con I have a, a book also on, on um, surveys, because I surveyed after every class. I wanted to know what they thought about it, and I told them, please be very, very honest, because I am going to change this based on your feedback. Um, you know, some of, the, some of it was, you know, uh, that they didn't want to listen to videos. They didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to have, they don't have time. They have babies at home, and they don't have time to look at a book before. <laughs> So these, then, these, these are all the people who have been accepted into the nursing. Program. These are nursing yeah, students. That's the, hard, that's the problem. That's right. Yeah. right. This is what's so shocking. Yeah, some of it's a little shocking, right. so, and and the reason why I want to tell you is not to shock you, but really so you're aware of what you're going to be faced with if you try this. Well, and plus, I mean, we expect them to read before anyway, which yeah. we know they really don't. That's why I was wondering how well it works and how you tried to. Them or, you know, well, force them, but. 
Some of the things that would help too, and Shelly told me this, but of course I got this idea in the middle of this 90, yeah, it, I mean doing it with the 50, it's so much easier. It's just, you know, the smaller class size, and if you have less than 50, it's better, like the smaller the class size, the better it is. Because with the 90 students, yeah, it's a lot. Twenty is perfect. That's beautiful because you can set up three people to one iPad in one activity. Me, when it was ninety, it was four to five. However, they didn't all show up, and that's another thing I'm going to talk to you about. Um, just to share with you, uh, from what I've read, some of them initially they may, may not, like you said, you know, initially they may not actually prepare before coming to class. But once they get the idea that you involve them, say for example, yes. you really have to put them on the spot, like not, not yeah. individually, maybe in the groups. They would know later on that well. I need to come prepare. Right. Right. So initially, they they you know, they may not, but you just continue on. And I want to show you. Of, of well, that's the part of the problem that. too, because you were doing this by yourself. You know, and the rest of the team is doing what we always. Right. Well, that's also another issue. You know, I, I do have my, my pros and cons section, so I will talk, like, I know it seems a little scattered, um, I, but I will talk about some of those issues that you may have. So if you are the only person teaching, it's very easy, because then they don't, can't say, well, you know, Professor Baxter, I mean, I really like the way Professor Baxter lectures. That's the way you should do it. And it's like, what? Well, Okay, <laughs> I hear you, <laughs> like, whatever the reason is, okay. Um, but I will show you, too, one of the things that I did to um, make them accountable for their learning was I built something in Blackboard. All right, I'm going to show you the one most recent. So the 90 person, at the amount of work that, it does entail a lot of work on your part, too. As the educator, it does. Each semester you do it. Every time you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. I can assure that. Um, I will also tell you that this semester I had double the load. So that was also another shatter. <laughs> so some of the things that maybe I didn't employ this time that I will employ next time m will be a little easier because I won't have as much load as well. So, you know, that, that also, you know, you have to think about yourself too. You know, like how much can I do f without pushing myself to the limit and then it coming out crazy and you don't get, you've done all this extra work, the students didn't benefit, you didn't benefit. <laughs> so like these are some of the things that you'll have to consider when you're doing something like this, if you want to do something like this. So what I did was, it's called a wiki, these things. I never knew what a wiki was myself. Wiki, what's a wiki? Sounds wacky, right? You know, like, what's a wiki? So it's something that, um, anything that you can click on, click into from Blackboard. Right, so here I made my musculoskeletal wiki. This is from one of my classes, the musculoskeletal wiki. And you um, add that wiki, and in the wiki, you then start building your content. Now, I know the nursing program does, but does everybody else here use Blackboard? Yeah. Yeah, so you can, yeah, so it's great. So then from here, you'll probably know how to do it. So I made my um, folder here. They click on the folder. And this one I, I, I didn't do perfectly, but I um, really you should see already the, uh, the student part already, but you have to do an extra click here. I don't know what I did wrong there. But, and I also put tutorials on there about iPads. Students had no idea what an iPad was, which I was shocked because I thought everybody held an iPhone. And I thought they had at least that much knowledge. They really didn't. So that's another thing, knowing your class what they have, what they're capable of. So having tutorials is a good idea. One of the comments that came across to me was, can you yourself do a tutorial that shows how you expect it, right? And then also assign, pre-assigning helps. So if you pre-assign to students and say, this is what we're doing. All of it relates to your study guide. This part, your group is going to do this part. Your group, gonna, you're going to do this. Shelley gave me a great idea, and she said, assign people who you may think, you know, ask the other. Like with us, if I had asked, say, Trish and Celeste, and said, which ones are your strong students? Who do you think would be a leader? Assign little leaders so that they can make sure that things happen. You know, and those leaders would ensure that the blackboard piece was used and things like that, and that, that maybe they could have whatever they wanted to do to prepare. So really, the assignment ahead of time would be helpful. I did not employ that. That's my next plan to do. All right. So 
I'm going to click into here. All right, so then here is the basic place where the assignment is. All right, and it's just telling you, please enter your content in the folder. The folder, so I'm going to use, instead of using this, I'm just going to pull it out. All right, the folders corresponded to the activity. So here's my activity for this class, and each folder corresponded to a part of the activity. So then what did the students have to do? It depended on whatever this said that they had to look up and find out, and then they had to plug it into their part. So here's group 1A. So group 1A needed to put their information in here. This group, they were not supposed to add as comments. So you should be able to click on and see the material. I will also say that um, some groups actually put beautiful uh, tables. They're supposed to be making tables. They're supposed to be doing a lot of things, right? But this class, the one I happened to be, put, the one I pulled up and I'm showing you now, only you know a third of the class showed up that day. And the information the students are posting is what they researched on their iPad. No. No, 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 that was, for, that was based on apps and that. This is out of their books, out of specifically material we gave them. So yeah, this is their books. So you're not randomly using. I did say if you find a, a YouTube video you want to put up there, let me know, let me see it, and I'll tell you whether or not. They found that some of them did do some internet research, and they did find some tables that they, that they checked with me first. Did the material, was it congruent with what I would expect them to know and what would be found in their book, all right? So um, this is what they used, this is how I did it. And this is what I had to show, you know, that they were getting their work done, okay? So, um, so what we're looking at here is what? Tell me that again. This is all the students' classwork. Their work. This is all their work. Now. The, this one okay. that I have up here is group 2D. Group 2D is correlated to their paper here. So like I, all my prep work okay. went into, you know, and I always start with how many iPads do I have? How many students then do I have? What's reasonable for the group that I have? So what's reasonable for a group of four to five students to work on versus a group of three to four, mm -hmm. you know? So the, no, it's okay. So the iPad only so they can post the blackboard? Well, that's the thing I needed to talk to you about, and that's part of the cons. I used the iPads in the way it really wasn't meant. So the iPads, it's meant to use apps, and we're going to go and do that. The iPads are used for different reasons than what I, was, uh, what I ended up using it for, mostly for. Can I, can I just kind of like follow up? So you, you yes, we're jumping all over, so yeah. You're, you're right. <laughs> Material. Yes. They were pre-recorded. Well, I pre-recorded, yes. They, you, I, you, you told them to listen to part coming to the supposedly now your lecture. Yes. Okay. So your lecture time is, is now devoted to active learning. Active learning. When do they do this? When do they post it? Is this a, an They do this during class time. Okay. That's kind of okay. what I was asking, too. Yes. This is what they're doing during class time. So this is what they looked like. They were very engaged. They were very, they were discussing things. They were, you know what? It wasn't like, we have what's called precept where they're working on case studies. But this was really very important to them. The key, case studies we give them are very related to the lecture we just taught them. This is their learning time. They had to work on it, otherwise they're losing their class time. So I will say from doing precept and doing this, I saw a huge difference in engagement in the students. Not saying in precept they're not engaged, they are. And it's, very, it's another good tool to use. However, I will tell you when, they, I mean they were very active, they were moving around, they were very engaged in their books. In precept we're lucky, they, can, they have this PowerPoint, so they're using their PowerPoints. Here, they're in their books, I made sure, like with the musculoskeletal, there's so many points, I can never cover them all. 
that every point in the study guide was covered. So for me, the entire study guide, my goal in this case was to get that entire study guide done for them. They were doing it, they were working on it, and they, they, had it, they should have had it prepared, but we didn't have enough students that day to prepare it. For that particular topic, how many, how many active learning activities did you engage was it only that one this one piece, but then I, I, what I did was I followed through, and it's a very good question, in, in precept, and I made the precept into an act of, so, okay, you guys did, you learned about rice, right? Rest, ice, elevation, and compression. What you do if somebody has, you know, they fall and, and they get hurt, right? So now I want you to go ahead and do it. You worked on it, you discussed it. Another big thing is that they are really doing, they are really working collaboratively and they're really working together when they're doing this. And then I, so I set up stations. And yes, did I set up enough stations? Did I have enough for 90 students? I did. But then I was honestly happy that only 30 showed up that day. <laughs> I will be honest, brutally. Um, the other thing I will say about this class particularly it's very easy to blame the flip classroom to say they didn't show up because of this. But in honesty, they weren't showing up to a lot of things. So the class in general wasn't great on showing up to their precepts anyway. They just weren't great at it. Like this was not, so part of it is they didn't want the flip classroom, but the other part was that they weren't showing up anyway. <laughs> so that's some of the things that you have to look at and weigh so that it's, you know, you're not thinking automatically, oh, it's the flip classroom, I'm done, I'm not doing it again. You know, so it's really not that. Okay, so, there, each group is given a particular assignment that's about that particular case study. Right. right? And so, they, so they use the iPad to research. They use yeah. it for research. For some research, they could. They could use it for YouTube videos. They could do that. I had some apps. I'm going to show you the app I used because I think it's very important for you to see how the iPads are supposed to be used. And I do use it that way for PCM. Um, but they also inputted into Blackboard with it. But it's, it wasn't meant for that. So you're going to see when I get to my surveys that there was a lot of complaints and connection. Like, we already know lab is a problem. It continues on to the classroom. Yeah. So connectivity is an issue, right? So when you're thinking about assigning the students some of these things, you want to think about that kind of stuff. You know, and why am I using it? And I, you know, I've been tooting your horn all day, saying that Shelly is great with the instructional design, and she will let you know whether or not, you know, you might want to try something else. You might want to try it this way, because the iPads may not really function the way that you think they're going to. But I will show you the iPads, and I did put iPads in front of everybody. Hopefully mine is still connected here. Okay, good. So when you turn on the iPads, does everybody know how to turn on the iPads? All right, there is a little, yep. Yeah. I didn't show the tutorial, you got it. So then you just swipe, so you swipe it to get it started. So then this is basically your front page. These are the iPads from CTE, okay? Um, and if you swipe again, what's it from, to the, which, which direction, to the left, from right to left, you will see there's a bunch of folders here. Um, Shelly has done a great job of putting together a lot of folders um, with a lot of content for a lot of different, you know, a lot of different fields here. You know, so it's not just nursing, it's not, so it's something that we all can use, absolutely. There are games in here, the blood typing game is a great example of that. Um, I happen to use two specific iPads that I research, I mean, I, uh, apps that I researched to use for my um, PCM, because I think that it was hard for them to understand the nutritional content and things like that. So I really wanted them to understand that. So she put one of them, so if you want to access these folders, you just, I'm going to go into, I think it's in the medical, the first one, and you'll see that there's a bunch of little apps. So this is the other thing that they were using it for. Some of the apps that I had for them was the micromedics. So I wanted them to look up their drugs. So they can look up their drugs right there. 
you know, um, and there's some other tools here, the CDC. So these are the things, when they were using the iPads, I told them exactly the websites I wanted them to use. So it wasn't random, oh, I'm going to use Wikipedia. It wasn't that at all. You know, it can seem like that. If you're not cautious and you're not really aware of what it is you're assigning them, they could end up using sites that aren't, you know, um, appropriate. We also have in here tabers. So these are some of the things that really are good for um, nursing. S uh, solve an outbreak. I mean, that's not us, but if you're in microbiology, that might be something that you want to do. Some of the other folders, I'm just looking for my PCM one. So one more. How, how do you one go back on these, on these iPads? Hit the button. You keep hitting the button. I'm sorry, I didn't explain that well. You keep hitting the button, and that will take you. It's either hitting the button or swiping. And then here's my TPN calculator. So here, you know, I gave them in their scenario things I want them to plug in so that maybe they can expect to see how many calories this patient will need to replenish them. This is just an example of what, you know, I used. It's a matter of getting used to it. So you're gonna, if you're going to be using an iPad to use these very awesome apps that are out there, such as having a Tabers right there at your hand, you know, instead of having the students bring in a Tabor, it's right there for them, and they're not randomly looking at some WebMD thing, you know, that they, you know, you have appropriate, you tell Shelly what you want on there, she'll let you know whether she can have it, and you're in full control of what you want them to look at. All right. Students were able to take things out of the micromedics and pay, paste that into the blackboard. Students, the ones that are savvy, are very able to do that. Um, I also used, so if you continue flipping, if you wanted, you'd see there's another folder for nursing. And in here, I have an NCLEX app, and I have um, the NutriScreen. So nutritional screening is huge. I mean, it has to be done within a certain period of time when people are admitted to the hospital, specifically our elderly, our very at-risk patients. So here, they had things they can work through. So that, would, my, that was part of their um, tools that I wanted them to work on. And when they found out the results and when they looked at that, these screens, I wanted them to post that on Blackboard, OK? And then when everybody goes home, they have all this to study. It's accessible to every student in the class, right? So that's the other thing about it. You know, if I just click on this, you have height and weight, and it goes on to other things, but it also has an information tab. And in there, it tells you a little bit more about that nutritional, specific nutritional screens. And by the way, there's many nutritional screens. So then if you have an app like that, you might want to tell them, just focus on the MERS one. And you'd have that written for them, or you're going to discuss it with them. OK? Really, everything should, like for us, everything has to be written, because they won't remember what you said two seconds later. <laughs> that's what I found. So that's really how to do it. I want to give you guys a couple of minutes to flip through and look at the apps that may reflect your um, specialty. You know, I, want, I do want to show for um, exercise, there's a great, 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 great one for exercise. I can find it. Health? Yes. Oh my gosh. This one is great. This, this one, it's under health. It's the eye muscle. It tells you by model or by list. You can pick it. Um, this is what you'd probably love this because um, it's showing how to do certain exercises here and with all the descriptions, you know. Um, iPads can also, they can also use it in the classroom to make videos of each other. You know, so for example, if they're working on one person is doing the actual rice technique, they're wrapping an arm, right, and they're applying ice, the other one could be recording it, and the other one could be teaching it, right? And then, then you could take that video and post that to Blackboard. So you have a lot of op options. And it's not some random looking on the internet just to find, you know. And I will tell you that I did make mistakes in the beginning just because I didn't quite know myself <laughs> what it was that I was trying to do with it. I knew my ideas. I had these ideas, but I didn't know how to transfer them. But since I've done it 
for a year now, I, I really am beginning to understand a lot more about how to do this effectively. And the real idea is getting your students engaged. All right, I'll show you some of my uh, points that I think it's really important to. Um, well, just real quick. Um, this app that you're looking at, um, our ex one of our exercise science professors is using it in her exercise class. Which so one is this? I eye muscle. And that one is under health. So. I, I, I did say I'd give you a couple minutes. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to look at that, play with that. And let us know if you have any questions. You know, I really think that you yourself should have that time to touch it and play with it. Health. And then you swipe again. Yes, there's more than one page. Some of these have only one page, and some have more than one. And it's great. Like, when I think about it, I could probably use this, you know, for my musculoskeletal lecture in some areas. Like just to show this is where your issue is. So it's a small little area, you know, and if it's a little area like that is hurt, how are you going to fix it? Can you hold these up to, uh, like say you had an iPad and you wanted to show them something during the lecture? I do it all the time. And what it is, this one, it looks like this. The V. What are these called? VGA connectors? Uh, Shelly has one from CTE, so when you get iPads, there'll be one in there, or I bought my own. And this is what you need, and it connects right to our podiums. Yes, it's so cool. So that's how I was able to use my Twitter and some of the other things that I did in the classroom. All right. So time is kind of, um, I just want to go back and just tell you a couple of the outcomes I wanted. And that's another thing. I can't stress enough. I cannot stress enough, all right, um, how much work it takes. Like, you really have to look at your apps. You really have to get, you have to be able to use it. You have to be able to punch these things in. You have to make sure that it's congruent with what you want the students to learn, all right? So it's not just some random app and this cool thing I'm doing in class, but that it's specific to certain outcomes. All right, and of course we want, the most important is those student learning outcomes, what we call SLOs. We want to make sure that they're learning, right? We want to make sure that they're going to remember this information and that they can not only remember it, but then they can go ahead and apply it. We're hoping that their test scores will improve. You know, we're hoping that by adding some of these apps and doing some of these alternative things in class, that they'll be a little bit more prepared for the workplace. You know, that's another thing. We're teaching all sorts of things, and we're hoping that they can take these tools that we're teaching them in the class and get out there in the real world and be able to apply it. Another thing is, these students that aren't very technologically savvy, well, guess what they're coming out to? And guess what they're going to be expected to know how to do, right? So they're going to be expected to know how to do things. Um, I have a lot of other uh, tools that you know, out of time, I, I really can't show a lot of the rest of these tools, but again, if you want me to come and sit with you, um, if you have any questions for me, if you want to see my activities, by all means, I'm happy to email things to you, I'm happy to sit with you. Um, I know Shelly is definitely happy, but if you're interested in what I did, if you have large classrooms, how, did you break, how would you break it up? How did it work for me? You know, things like that. You know, so if you want uh, a little bit more, please feel free to reach out. I'm very happy to, to um, help you out. Very happy. So some of the um, positives of this is that you, the students are very engaged. And that came out across the board in all my surveys. Collaborative work, they love that. They love working together, and they love having all their study material put together for them. Like, they loved that. Um, and that you want to make higher order thinking learners. So you want them to think on the higher level, right? You want them to be able to um, think beyond right, just what we're standing there and teaching you, right, so that's the piece that's going to transfer into the real world, okay, for us as faculty, I bet if you went home and you went onto iTunes U 
and you put in your lecture, you're going to find about 20 different ones that are teaching the same thing, 20 different instructors out there teaching all for free. So when I say added value here, it's you um, giving more to your classroom. Like somebody, you always hear, what are people going to see? If I were to walk into your classroom, what am I going to see? You know? Yes, and it's so true. It's what Dwight says. And it's so true. It's his interview question. It is. <laughs> right? What am I going to see when I walk into your classroom? Right? You know? Um, and, and I'm not knocking the regular lecture. Sometimes you really have to lecture. Sometimes you want to be able, you know, there's certain topics that you really need to discuss it with them, but maybe you want to leave some more time at the end for things like clicker questions or a little more interactive to see, did they get that? Did they understand that? It doesn't have to be 100% one or the other. You can combine them, and that's something else that, you know, I'm more than happy to tell you how I did it, how some of my team does that, and of course we know Shelly, she's great at that. Um, and of course you want to meet all your course outcomes and objectives. You know, I happen, I feel when I use the Flip Classroom, I'm not rushed. I always go beyond my lecture time. I'm probably yeah. almost going to do it today. <laughs> yeah, sure. If they, well, you know, that's the thing. They're not, no, but they're not required to do anything. Like, I mean, but if they want to learn from it, they will. It's no, there. I'm saying because, say, if I'm in a group that worked on the rice, yes, the teaching plan for that. Well, then I don't know what Celeste did in her group. Like so let me, because you're going to go to that blackboard piece. Yes. So you've got the study guide. Right. Like with, with, with musculoskeletal, that class, I specifically covered each and every study guide point right. in right. that. Right. So instead of you going home individually, looking at your book okay. and writing it out, if you're the, the student to do so, because not every student, some students come to class, listen to lecture, and are done. They don't look at the book. They don't ever again. Some students take that study guide and answer every single question. Yes. This time it's answered for them. And if there's something they don't understand, they can either ask me or they can look further into it. Oh, okay, this didn't seem like it was full enough for me. Let me look a little. But most of it's there for them. So their study materials are pretty much done. All they now have to do is, you know, study it and look at it and review it themselves. Really, kind of part of the goal was for them to have kind of multimedia input into their study guide. Is that my... So, like, you would if they want, to yes. YouTube thing or to post this or post that. Now, the interesting thing yeah. is I did have them do a videos. Right? And that's coming up. I did have them do some, I asked them to do videos, but some of the things you have to be weary of is when you're doing this. So if you're going to flip a class and you're going to want them to do some outside work of a class, make sure it's not right before an exam. <laughs> they hate that. What? I have no time. How dare you do that to me? That's what you'll hear. And that's what I heard. <laughs> Three people actually did the video and I requested. So, I mean, it's up to you. You could shoot. That's the... And that's why the word flipped classroom, really, I'm not going to use that term anymore because I find that the, the word itself is misleading because it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, you, that I'm just adding extra tools to help you to learn. Whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's you making your own video, whether it's you playing with an app. So that you understand how much calories a person would need when they're deficient in this. How much protein, fats, carbohydrates, that mixture. And what does that mean for that patient? So these are the things. So you would have to know, you know, what was my uh, learning objective here? And that's what you base it on. You base it on your learning objective, not on the fact that I have an iPad, how cool, let me play with it. It's, and I know that would not be you. But um, in a way, I think I thought that way at first. Um, but then I, you know, once you start really looking at it and why am I doing this, it's really for that positive learning experience, yeah, right, right. you know, so that's what it is. And the fact that now they can't get this, you have to come to class. And I thought that it would increase uh, class attendance. This class particularly did not increase anything. They just were an interesting class. Um, It's fun. It's great. Once you start looking at it, you can spend so much time. So the students actually did do some YouTube, vi do some videos. 
Um, can I get one to open? No, it didn't open. But one of the student groups decided to do it, and this is really how I, I wanted them to do it. Did it there, right after class in the lab. And it came out really good. One was the patient, one was the daughter, one was recording it, and one was the nurse. And the daughter was asking all sorts of questions. It was awesome. They did a really nice job. The other video that was posted was somebody said, in my group, nobody else wanted to do it or even try. So he sat in front of his computer and he did a teaching plan. And it was great, you know. He did well. He passed the class, the course. Um, some of the cons, definitely you need to know this, right? What are you going to be faced with as you're trying, if you're going to try different things? Well, resistance for sure. Students do not want to have to do the work. They just don't. They don't want to have to read before. So you have that few that really love, you know, that are ahead of the game. And they're calling you three tests uh, ahead saying, you know, I listened to your lecture from, and it's the last lecture, you know, and you're like, wait, how are they there that fast? But most of them, you know, you're giving them extra work to do. I am putting the learning on you. I'm not just going to sit here and give it to you and you just take it. I am making you have to be active in your learning versus passive. So whenever we're lecturing, it's really a passive learning. So it's just us talking to them. The most active they're getting is taking notes. And then, you know, that's really, it's considered passive learning. So um, a lot of people actually like that. There are people that really do enjoy that. And they don't, maybe they don't have the time to. I mean, we do, we are in a commuter college. So people are going to school, they have kids, they're working like crazy. So this is some of the things. So when you are, when you are, if you're in a class where students are like that, and they have, I mean, our clinical paperwork, it's a lot. So when they have all that, maybe you want to think about how much prep work do I want them to do? I want them to do prep work, but do I want them to do a lot? So you want to think about that. How much prep work should they be doing so that they really aren't stressed and the likelihood is that they come? You know how I knew the, that they didn't come prepared? They, I knew they didn't listen to my lecture, which was a full-length lecture hour and 15 minutes, they were asking me questions that I knew specifically they would have known if they listened to the lecture. And that's how, and I said, I said, did you listen to the lecture? No. Okay, well, you know, if you hadn't listened, you would have known that, but this is the information anyway. So I would give it to them anyway. So I'm still giving it to them. Um, they are unfamiliar with, like we talked about iPads, they may not have that you know, computer technology awareness, um, and they're, they're scared. They feel like they didn't get the lecture. They feel like they didn't get that material. Even though they have the hour and 15 minutes recorded, they had time to really work in their books with me circling around answering questions, and they were asking questions of each other, they were still very nervous. And they had precept. So they actually had more, but they felt uncertain. So these are some of the things. Risky business, you know, like you, if you're working in a team, not everybody is going to be, you know, on board. And the risky part, the students are also going to be writing in your, you know, reviews. <laughs> that stunk. Absolutely did not work. <laughs> so you have to be prepared for that. And that is something that you will see, you know, and that's something you should expect, but not to let it. We had um, 44 class evaluations come back and out of the 44 people that responded three made a comment that it wasn't for them and it wasn't even very negative they just said it wasn't for them and I thought that was very good and 43 out of 44 that's a very small percentage at this point um, okay so you could have department resistance faculty other faculty resistance um, you, there's connectivity issues we talked about unfamiliarity yourself you know so that's where you have to do the research and look at it you know yourself to see would this work how would it work talking to people who have done it before themselves um, so okay I have a book here of the actual feedback that the students gave me and I on Google Docs Google Drive that you can actually make a survey. So I made these very simple surveys. Positive feedback, they like the collaboration, they love the independent learning experience. This came across all four classes. Um, additional resources, they love that, they like to be able to apply that content, you know, getting in the apps and stuff. Um, negative, they felt like there wasn't enough time, especially when it was before an exam. 
I have to tell you, if you do it the day before an exam, that's a glaring thing. So what I did was, what me and my team did, they really helped me out on this, we switched the lectures around so that it doesn't hit before an exam. Um, and th they don't have enough time to then prepare because they're doing other things. Um, also, the iPad itself connection act things. The connectivity was a problem. I was using the iPads too much for getting on Blackboard. So you might want them to do work that they send to you that you post it. You could post the work for them. Um, OK, they gave recommendations. I left a spot. What are some of your recommendations? In the beginning, they wanted tutorials. You know, they didn't know how to use it. Assign the work ahead of time. This is coming from them. Uh, have class present. Oh, that meant they would prefer that their entire student's body showed up. They all wanted it there because then they could go back and look at everybody's work. The last one was really a very well done one, my very last one, and that's the one that the least amount of students showed up, and that was a shame because the most of students, they would have benefited so much from it. Um, and so there was, there's blank areas in that uh, because of that. Um, some of the students says this is a precept, this is not a class work. <laughs> um, and then the iPad tutorial, people thought, that it wasn't that great, the, uh, that one. So what they recommend is you yourself doing one. And then I have classroom attendance and test scores. I didn't collab put that on here, but if anybody's interested in that, to let me know. All right, so definitely if you're gonna do something different in your classroom, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do surveys and get student opinions. I also have one of my, you know, during my evaluation time, we all have, I'm not tenured, so every year they come and evaluate me. So I have one of my coworkers come and evaluate me on it. So I said, could you please come to my flipped classroom? Because I would really like your opinion. So your, fat, your, you know, your coworkers are the greatest people to use, to give feedback to. Um, and of course, it's going to take more time. There's not a lot of data out there for the college level, but it's getting more and more widely known. So the records you keep, is actual beginning of research yourself. So it's a place, it's a place to go. Um, thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out. Besides the listening to the recorded lecture, yes. did, you, did you give it other assignments? I didn't, um, but I actually realized it would be better if I did. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's, it's the recorded lecture enough because the, all the active learning takes place now in the classroom. Right. Everything, yeah. yes. Exa that's exactly true. Now, we may be getting rid of the audio, the, like the videos. So what I'll do is if we get rid of the videos, yeah, if we, are st if we don't record, at least, I don't know, team two, if we don't record, they can have to read. They'll have something to do. They really need to be prepared. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be video. It's whatever it is you assign them. Yeah. Yeah. And all the courses are all different.